If you're a self-projected projector, then that means that you have anywhere from two to four centers defined. And something that I wanted to talk about today was really about your environment. And I don't mean your literal human design environment where we're all best suited to be in certain environments where we're least likely to receive conditioning. I mean more of your environment when it comes to other people. It can be a clue, of course, to look into your human design environment, your literal design environment. Um, but what I mean is the company that you keep. As a self-projected projector, we're meant to use our voice. We're meant to practice speaking out loud so we can listen to our spontaneous utterances so that we can then understand on multiple levels what our truth is, decisions that we want to make, how we want to move forward, how we're really feeling. Sometimes it's unclear. Um, for all humans, what's really going on. And that's why we are gifted our human design authority where we all have a very specific way of knowing um, or practicing discernment with our truth outside of our programmable mind. And then the longer that we're in the experiment, the more that we're able to discern who we are coming back to home base more frequently. But as a self-projected projector, um, it's really important for you to use discernment with who you're around. I personally only have two centers to find and I can't tell you what your lived experience is like. A human design reader can't tell you that. Um, no one outside of you can help you to understand your personal lived experience. Of course, going to a therapist and talking to professionals can help you, you know, create more of a roadmap of, oh, these things happened to me. They might be impacting me in this way. But understanding your design is just the framework. And then you're meant to go out there and experiment with it. You're meant to go out there and test it. It's an empirical science, meaning that it's only proven valid through your personal validation and experience. So for myself included, for myself and others included that I've worked with and know, it's kind of like when you decide that you want to change something in your life, that you wanna live more in integrity with your truth rather than these external influences, then people can end up leaving your life or they can end up coming in. It usually, has to do with a mass sort of exodus of people, or it can happen over time. But the more that you're able to honor your needs and your voice as a self-projected projector, the more empowered you will be in living as the person that you wanna be, whatever that, excuse me, means for you. And I've really been practicing with people that I'm close with. Um, fortunately enough, I'm a human design nerd and I, you know, when I feel the report is there um, and I talk to my friends or family or new people coming into my life, I'm usually, we talk about human design and I pull their human design chart and I'm able to discern and feel what energetic frequencies I'm feeling in my body. Because if you're a self-projected projector, it means you don't have any motors. It means you don't have anything below the G center. So it means we're constantly taking in a lot of frequencies and energy from other people. And it's beautiful. It's great. It helps us focus. It helps us get through the day. It helps us do what we need to do. It's not that we're siphoning the energy. We're just riding other people's waves and then we're meant to get off the wave, right? So something that I've really been practicing is I have a lot of manifesting generators in my life. They're 30-ish percent of the population. Because of some of my circuitry, I'm attracting those other halves of those um, hanging gates. You can call them hanging gates and they're either dormant or they're active depending if they're out of a defined center um, or if they're conscious or unconscious, we're constantly attracting the other half of those gates. So if you look at a center, if you look at your solar plexus center, um, if you're a self-projected projector, you have an open solar plexus and that is going to be the triangle on, this is probably gonna be the opposite for the video so I won't use my hands. It'll be the triangle on the right-hand side, the white triangle on the lower right-hand side facing inwards. And that means that you're going to be taking in the emotional frequencies of your environment and those around you. And if you have no gates coming out of it, it means that it is fully open. And that means that you have the full potential to experience the, the whole spectrum of emotions and feelings and connection. 
if you have some hanging gates, if you have a gate coming out of that white center, it means that the energetic frequencies will be funneled or channeled through those hanging gates, those gates that are coming out of that center. You'll have more of a palpable pattern and expression of energetic frequency through whatever that gate is about. Now, if you have a best friend or a partner or a loved one who has that center defined, or they may have the other half of that gate. So let's say you have a, a gate coming out of that center. You're always going to be attracting the opposite end of that gate. And sometimes people will have the full channel um, or they'll just have the half. Whatever sort of connection it is, you'll most likely on a genetic cellular level be attracted to people that have that because you want it. Your, your expression is saying, here it is, or it might come through via the transits. But that means that you're going to be amplifying that energetic frequency. You're going to be taking it into your body. But if you know, this is how I feel when I'm by myself. This is how I feel, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing my favorite activity, this is how I feel. And then when I go into the auric field of that other person who either has a defined emotional solar plexus or they have the other half of that channel so together we have a defined solar plexus i'm able to discern the energetic shift when you're able to kind of feel into your body and have more of a somatic connection with yourself then you can know hmm this is fleeting energy this energy is not mine that doesn't mean you're giving your power away to the situation or letting your emotions fly but you're able to say hmm when i'm around this person I feel differently in this way. And when I'm around this person, I want to be cognizant of A, B, and C. And it's not a good or a bad thing. It doesn't mean that people are bad, you need to avoid people, but it is very important to be aware of the company you keep and how you feel around them. Because depending on your childhood experience or any of the larger impactful events in your life, you could unconsciously be attracted to patterns that might not be supporting you in the way that you want to live your life. If you're saying that you want to make these changes, we all want to make these changes. Changes can feel really hard because our neural pathways are designed in a way that help us survive. We have our genetics from our ancestors and from our parents that are setting us up in this way because they survived in this way. So their genes were given to us so that we can survive too when we encounter similar events, right? So just because you have your human design saying one thing doesn't mean that it's going to be completely consistent with every other self-projected projector or whatever type you are. So the point in understanding that yourself as a self-projected projector and practice using your voice and paying attention to who you're around and how you feel around those certain people is so that you can be more selective with who you're around. And as you build more of that rapport and that foundation with yourself and using your voice and being confident with your home frequency, your home base, then you're able to go out in the world and not maybe fluctuate as much with the changing environment. It's still a very challenging thing and it's not a bad thing to constantly be changed by those that you're around or the transits. But I personally always say, I'm, I'm selective with who I'm around because I'm highly colored by the company that I keep. And that's just a truth for me. It's not a disempowering thing, but I choose to spend most of my time with people where I, when I leave them, I feel uplifted or when I leave them, I don't feel drained. It doesn't mean that those people that usually lift me up aren't going to go through things or trials in their life where they're not lifting me up. It means that I'm aware that generally speaking, most of the time they're not, I don't feel drained. I'm not giving my power away. I'm not letting them drain my energy and I'm not trying to process their emotions or their, you know, if they have a defined root center and as someone with, as a self-projected projector, you have a open root center. Sometimes that frequency of being around someone with a defined root center, it can make you feel very rushed. It can make you feel like you need to go faster. It can make you feel as though they are putting pressure on you and sure they might, but it's more just the energetic pressure on you that's coming into your body. That's making you feel like that. Or someone with a defined root center can make you feel really grounded and delicious and it can be a really beautiful thing. So there is no hard and fast sort of um, tried and true way of whose design will mesh with you 
um, and whose won't and what is meshing anyway, right? Everyone has the potential to be our teacher, even if it's very challenging. Maybe they came into our life to help us work through something that we needed to work through and that relationship will shift, that dynamic will shift once we've worked through that component, once we've let go of the falsehoods of, or the perception of who we are when we're not really that. Um, thinking about childhood and you know going to school traditional school and people telling you that you had to learn a certain way there um there are so many factors in the human design chart that can help us to understand why we might learn differently they call it neurodivergence now we're finally beginning to understand that everyone learns differently our brains process information differently we may understand in more visual ways we may see energetic frequencies um we're kind of allowing more of that nuance in and as a self-projected projector um, I believe I mentioned this in one of my other videos. I feel that um, your voice was probably very challenged at various aspects in your life. Not always. Of course, it's never across the board, but it's really a practice. You, my understanding, my, not my understanding, how about my personal opinion is that you chose your incarnation, you chose your parents, you chose your design, and that is. A notion that a lot of people don't want to consider because it's infuriating and if this doesn't feel true for you I respect that I'm not here to impress anyone upon you know impress my opinions on anyone why would anyone choose to go through terrible experiences have terrible parents why would anyone want that from a larger standpoint soul level I believe that we sign up for challenging things to to learn lessons here on earth to help our soul not in a hierarchical way, but evolve into a greater expanse. Um, so when we're able to look at things from a higher standpoint, I really believe that we chose our designs, even though, you know, the neutrino stream and our imprinting could be different, this or that. If human design has come into your life, it came into your life for a reason. And if it feels disempowering, I totally respect that because I found out about human design when I was 24 so that would be eight years ago now and it did not feel empowering to me because maybe it came into my life so early when I wasn't really ready when I wanted to be someone different than I was to as part of my line three as a three five I meant to experiment you know there's so many different avenues to explore within your design but for me I really had to figure out if it was sound if it was truthful um, and as a self-projected projector I had to I have to talk to other people about it I have to see if there's as a projector I have to see if there's patterns and consistencies that I can sort of corroborate these like truths like okay well Ross said this well now I've spoken to my human design mentor and he's giving me different information and you know, the most important thing is that you feel empowered to live as yourself. And if anything is taking away from that, then ask yourself what part of you is feeling challenged? What part of you is feeling threatened? And is this actually harmful? Is this material or the system or this coach or this person, like, is it actually harmful? Is it actually good for me at this point in time? And it very well may not be correct for you. That, that person may not be right for you. This video could be very triggering and wrong for you. I get it. We all go through different things where we're meant to be challenged, where we're meant to be propelled. And we are also victims at times, victims to terrible circumstances. So no one can tell you anything about yourself. They can just give you a general framework about your energy and the mechanics of your form. And then you have the choice and the power to exercise that knowledge with whatever you want to do and maybe this the system came into your life for a reason to help you use your voice to help you create a new relationship with your brain our brains and our minds are beautiful they're not meant to be completely ignored they're meant to take in information they're meant to have ideas and inspiration um you know and it's an integrated system something that you integrate into your life it's like a lifestyle change saying that you want to eat different foods because you now have an allergy or you want to cut out more red meat or you don't want to eat meat anymore. That's a lifestyle change. Usually lifestyle changes take time. Some people like to do things hard and fast because they have to or it's life or death. Um, but in this case, if you're still watching this video at this point in time, you're really interested in learning about yourself and feeling better about your life and who you are. 
And as a self-projected projector, the company that you keep is very important. And most of us aren't always in control of our environment. We have jobs, we have coworkers, we have family members, we have people in our life that think differently than we do. So what do we do? We have to remember that the power is always within us to regulate ourselves, to learn more about ourselves, to build a deeper foundation and root system within ourselves so the external world doesn't have as much of an impact on us. I believe that's all that I would like to share today, but it's just something that's been very top of mind for me as I went through a period of time where I've gone through many periods of time where uh, my social groups or relationships just sort of seem to all disappear at once or I go through a lot of periods where there aren't people in my life and I'm like, I want more relationships, I want more people. And then, and then when they come, I'm able to say, oh, this feels so much better than it did before. And that's because not only was I attracting and allowing in different people, it's because I personally changed. And as we change, we sort of up level into deeper arenas within ourselves. And that means that we attract different vibrational frequencies of people. And that means that we also have less tolerance. So things can also feel sort of exasperated or people that, you know, where we used to relate in one way, it now is so annoying to us. And it's just because our tolerance is less because we know who we are and we're honoring who we are and we're not willing to sacrifice our well-being in order to be perceived or relate in shallow relationships and that doesn't mean that I don't have shallow relationships or I don't like to be fanciful and fun and some of my people with some of my people it means that I have different degrees of who I let into my life and who I trust to use my authority with and that means that I feel empowered in knowing that it is a privilege to to know someone intimately it's a privilege to hear their voice and their truth and as a projector let alone a self-projected projector your voice is your superpower so remember that i'm sending you so much love